Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kim Ray, and I'm back with your weekly wrap up. And you're watching Kim Ray Music TV. Make sure if you're new here, you subscribe down below to my channel, like this video, and share this video with all your friends. All right, let's get into the tea because a whole lot went down this week. All right, so first we want to send out our prayers to those in the Middle East, uh, specifically in Beirut, who were affected by this explosion that occurred earlier this week. Um, when you see the videos, I'm not gonna show it because, you know, lots of people were injured. The people who died um, from this, the death toll is probably still rising because they're still probably locating bodies and doing, it's just a mess. It's, it's gonna take a lot to recover from. Um, it's um, just the PTSD of it all and, you know, recovering people and figuring out where people are and, um, the injuries and you know injuries versus fatalities is just a whole lot um, to be that is going to have to happen um, with this explosion. I was on uh, the Wall Street Journal and they have um, kind of like a step by step of what happened. So basically this warehouse was storing ammonium nitrate um, that I guess they just weren't using. They kind of were just storing it there. Um, I don't really know who they is. Whoever it was, they weren't using it. But apparently this chemical is like really toxic and lethal, right? And so first a fire um, broke out and this is all at the port warehouse. Um, and then an explosion had this like large um, bit of smoke that went into the air, right? Then it says a second explosion triggers a ball of fire. The fireball rises, pulling air, water vapor, and debris into the mushroom stem. That's that picture that we saw. That's that video that we saw of this like mushroom type of um, cloud of smoke, almost like an atomic bomb. The cloud billowing over Beirut is brown and red, the color of nitrogen dioxide released when the ammonium nitrate exploded. So somebody is gonna have to explain why this was just sitting in this warehouse. How did they not know that, you know, what sparked it, what happened because this is a huge thing. So we just wanna send prayers out to the Middle East Prayers out to Beirut, prayers out to Lebanon, because um, this is not a, a quick fix. Um, like I said, it's gonna take a whole lot um, to get all this um, fixed, so prayers up for them. Okay, so Aurora PD, they are under fire this week for pulling over um, a woman by the name of Brittany Gillum and um, her kids and nieces and handcuffing them and having them lay um, on their stomachs on the asphalt, on the concrete, because they thought that the car or the van that she was driving was a stolen motorbike, okay? So where we've heard of Aurora PD is, um, they're in the news right now and people are protesting because of the death of Elijah McClain. Okay, if you guys are not familiar with the death of Elijah McClain, you know, he's this young kid who was walking home from the store and, um, you know, they, they tased him and, you know, it's a whole, a whole um, unfortunate story and unfortunately those cops have not been arrested and so they are already under fire. So this video here, I'm not going to turn the sound on because just the screams and the cries of that mother and um, of the the kids, it's just a lot to take in. It's very triggering. Um, but as you guys can see, they're laying there. The cops, um, I don't know if they realized that you know they had made a mistake. You know, as it's going on, but to have this six-year-old, I believe there's a six-year-old, like a preteen age, and then like a 17-year-old. It don't even matter. Kids, 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 handcuffed, laying on their stomach on the concrete in the middle of a hot day because you think a van is a stolen stolen um, motorcycle. Turns out, you know, um, Brittany had reported her van stolen months before. Maybe it was recovered. Um, it had, it was a whole different license plate. This license plate was Colorado. The license plate that they were looking for that would have been stolen was Montana. It was just a full out mix up. It's not so much about the mix up. It's so much about to arrest or have these children in handcuffs over a stolen vehicle. Um, or even, you know, what you perceive to be a stolen vehicle. I just don't understand why we have the kids in cuffs. 
why we have the mother in cuffs. I just, I don't under, I never, I will never understand the severity or why it has to be all of this for people that look like us every time. So apparently the police chief has come out with an apology, but I mean, that kind of stuff it takes for a six year old, that is traumatic. That's gonna take years of therapy to get over it. I mean, it's, it's just trauma. It's just more trauma for people in our community. So once again, prayers go out to Brittany Gillum and her family, Elijah McClain's family. Like we just need prayers as a country because I mean, when you do something like that with literally no remorse, you got all, you see all these cops, all these cops with guns drawn. And I mean, they're shrieking in terror. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So here's an update on um, Ellen and the whole situation with her. So it was looking like she was going to cancel her show and possibly not come back. You guys know her show's been on for a while. It's made a lot of great money, lots of publicity. So it's like, as soon as stuff starts getting bad, let's just back that back out and pack this on up, pack it up stretch right now. But um, producers that came out and said that no, they weren't gonna stop the show. They will be back. Um, but they are doing an investigation and they're trying to find out what's going down, what has happened, who did what, and it's all kind of people who have come out and said it wasn't Ellen specifically, but it was producers and they do believe that she probably knew about it and she didn't seem like the nicest person anyway. So it's just like, where there's smoke, there's fire. So at this point it's like, mm, Ellen, what you got going on down there? It ain't as happy as Disneyland as you think. That person that be in that Minnie Mouse suit probably be having smoke breaks and be upset about life. That's what it seemed like down at Ellen, okay? So I don't know, but people are upset with Kevin Hart because he came out, you know, defending her. Y'all know when Kevin Hart had all his stuff going on, Ellen came out, defended him, had him on her show. So um, she, he came out defending her and they was like, okay, where, where was you at with Nick Cannon? Where, where was you at with Monique? Where were you at with all these other people? And you know, Kevin Hart basically felt like, he felt like this. This social media shit is getting out of hand, dude. It is truly getting out of hand. <laughs> From showing support to a friend, you know, you get a, you get a fucking roar of frustration from so many calls, phone going off the fucking hook. I'm a friend. As a friend, if I have a friend in trouble ever, I'm gonna do my best to try to be there for that friend. Then I hear people go, what about Nick? That's your friend. Where were you for Nick? Cause you didn't see it means that I wasn't there for Nick. Sad times we live in, man. Nick was over my house every damn day when he went through. I was the one who called the president of the goddamn studios and reached out to so many to try to see what we can do to solve the situation, find a solution. Nick and myself talked, we vetted out the situation as friends, because I was there for my friends. It's like I'm gonna try my best to be there for all of them. When did we lose sight of reality? It's a up time, man. It's a up time that we live in. in. People are forgetting how to be people. People are now programs. When did we get here? Praying. Praying for a better place. Praying for a fucking better understanding. People go through happens. It's life. All I can say is that when they do, if you're on the side of that individual, your job is to try to be a support system. Is it going to be a whole body? 2020. Katy Perry came out and Tyrese came out and all these people came out, you know, caping for um, Ellen. And to me, it's like, we can cape and defend and save our friends all we want. But somebody else's experience with that person may not be the same experience as ours. And the thing about being a celebrity is, you definitely don't have the same experience as her employees, you know? So I think um, on one hand, I feel like, I mean, people grow and change all the time. He could have had a change of heart. 
no pun intended. He could have realized, you know, in all those situations, he should have came out. So from now on, he's going to come out and he's going to speak up about things and he's going to advocate for his friends publicly. He may have felt like that. But I think um, everybody else was just like, OK, Kevin Hart. You want to speak up for Ellen, but where was you at with this one? That one. So uh, we gonna see about Ellen, y'all. I keep hearing about this Pizza Gate. I don't really know what it is. If you know what it is, leave it down in the comments, child. I don't know what they talking about. All right, take off from your favorite boy band, Migos. Um, you know he's the third member, the the quiet member, the one who always gets the third verse, like Michelle. Um, he has been accused of sexually um, assaulting or i.e. raping a woman who is um choosing to not be her name not being revealed right now and so um he's denying all claims um she's allegedly suing him and um the story is still developing but you know a lot of people think celebrities have access to all types of women so why would they do this but you would be so surprised you would be so surprised to find out um, about what people do behind closed doors. And um, so, yeah, so we're going to keep our eyes on this story and I'll be letting y'all know what's going down with Takeoff. All right, that leads me to Jaguar Wright. Now, Jaguar Wright is a apparently a neo-soul artist from like back when all that was really popular with Erica Badu, Floa Tree, Common, Talib Kweli, and Most Def, and you know, that whole crew of, of um, you know, artists, okay, um, the, the woke, right? Basically, she was on a live um, the other day and she made some pretty serious claims and accusations and she called out some of the big names, Common and um, 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 I guess it's Malik B. So excuse me from last week when I was saying Malik B, but Malik B and um, Jill Scott and Erica Badu and Talib Kweli, you know, she called all these people out. It was sparked by, I think, you know, Malik B's passing and the roots not doing him justice enough for her. Or, you know, she was feeling like maybe they were um, fraud a little bit because, you know, they made it seem like he was such a pertinent part of this group. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but you know, when you are a person who stayed quiet and held secrets together for so long, I feel like everybody has a breaking point. So it kind of seemed like that's what was going on with her because she was hype. She was not taking no breaks or pauses in her speech. She was telling it all. And I'm telling you, just watching it, it was just like, ooh, this, she is calling out everyone everyone she talked about Wu-Tang and she talked about you know being on um, the tour bus and you know how to protect yourself from sexual assault because you know when you're on a bus full of grown men and these things are bound to happen and how you sleep on the bottom bunk closest to the front and how you know all these things and she talked about common you know her dating him and but him trying to you know um, force himself on her while she was asleep she talked about Talib Kweli allegedly being a peeping Tom she said that Jill Scott slept around she said that Erica Badu slept around and it was like oh my gosh she said that the roots the group the roots you know who tributed um, Malik B on um, Jimmy's tonight show because you know they play for Jimmy um, she said that they were only giving him $300 a week so it was just like a whole slew of hot tea and information. And I was just like, ooh wee, this is a whole lot, a whole lot. And all this information is alleged. I'm just repeating back to y'all what I seen on the live, but she was going off. Now in the wake of this, Tiffany Haddish did come out and say that her and Common are in love and you know, they messing around, they in a whole relationship. But the thing about Common is, I always associate him with like this wokeness and then that Just Right movie. I don't know if he's really like that. And I do understand, you know, these men be young or we be young, women be young, people be young. And then you grow up, you learn, you change and you progress. But the thing about it is, your your dirt ends up coming out so i don't i don't i don't really know what they're gonna do about this i don't know if they're gonna ignore it. you know um jaguar Wright came out in another live and she was talking about she was receiving threats 
So it's like somebody's trying to hush her up and nobody has come out and voided all of this out. Um, so I'm a little, I'm a little nervous and I'm a little shocked because I'm like, the Neo Soul group supposed to be the woke group. They supposed to be the, you know, the down, understand like the black woman and the, the love and the, you know, like, I was like, oh, this is, this is troubling my spirit. So, um, Jaguar Wright, she also in her life, she looked really hurt. Like she had seen and been through some things. She mentions, you know, the roots knowing about R. Kelly and them telling her like, if you want to get your money, like don't mind the business that pays you. And I was just like, I feel it, but a lot of our faves are, we they about to get found out. And I'm just like, we, at some point, we're gonna have to run off of the, um, off of the notion that people have to learn, grow, progress, and change. We gonna have to do that because everybody gonna be canceled soon, I'm telling you. So, um, I don't know, I don't know. Hopefully Common comes out and he can debunk all this and, you know, people can come out and say what they need to say, but I'm telling you, the look in Jaguar Wright's face, the inflection in her voice, seemed like no lie was told. Hmm. Okay, that brings me to Dr. Dre and Nicole Young. So, um, I don't think we've talked about them here, but basically in news, prior news, um, we had heard that there was no prenup, but she was gonna get half of everything. Y'all know he got beats by Dre. He's this super hot producer, so he's worth quite a bit of money. He's been famous for quite a long time, and she's been with him from day one. So, um, you know, we was thinking, you know, Nicole Young about to come up, but basically, um, Dr. Dre came out and said, no, there was a prenup. And Nicole Young's like, okay, yeah, but you you ripped it up. So I thought there wasn't no prenup. So now it looks like things are about to get ugly. Um, she's saying that she might've been forced to sign this prenup in, in like back in the 90s. So it's like, instead of this going peacefully with someone that you've known all this time, it's gonna get ugly. We gonna see how this gonna go down. I mean, when you have somebody that's worth that much, but then the wife has been with them that long, I, I don't know how that works in court, but I'm pretty sure they gonna slice it right down the middle. I'm pretty sure. All right, uh, your favorite Dipset rapper, Jewel Santana, has been released from jail, honey. He is bearded out. He was asking y'all, should he keep it? Should he take it away? He's showing Kim Bella all in the kitchen. She cooking for him. I'm like, it didn't even seem like he was locked up that long. I mean, it, it, technically, Love & Hip Hop New York would have been coming back now, and they probably would have been starting to shoot, but I mean, he made it back just in time to be stuck in the house with Kim Bella um, with the time, he, he needs that time anyway. So um, it's nice to see Joel Santana has been released. Loon, if y'all remember Loon, um, he was part of the Bad Boy Entertainment back in the day. He was on that, um, is it I Don't Know? I Don't Know, You Don't Have to Call, one of them. He's in one of them Usher songs. He has been released from jail as well. Bobby Shmurda. He has a parole hearing about a week ago, a week ago. That dance, right? He has a parole hearing in about two weeks and they are saying that things um, are looking good. So we hope to see him being released soon as well. So King Combs, you know, that's P Diddy's son. He was actually in a car accident, a Ferrari and Tesla car accident. He came out, you know, with a couple scratches, few bruises. He's all good to go. So we thank God for that. We don't need no, no more deaths. Okay, because um, I don't know if that was his mother or if it was his stepmother, but Kim Porter, you, you guys know that she passed not even a year ago. So we don't even, we don't even need that to happen with that family. So thank God he was okay. In Rona news, I can't tell if my videos are being, this is my third weekly wrap up and they're limited. My videos are limited. So I can't tell if it's the content that we talking about I, I don't know, or if it's the media, but I mean, limited is better than just no um, monetization at all. And these videos ain't getting that many views yet, so I ain't tripping. But anyway, um, there was a Beverly Hills party and all of y'all was out partying in this big, huge McMansion. And um, I didn't see one mask and um, people were shot and injured and 
Um, it apparently was like a whole gang ordeal. Um, and I'm just, the whole thing, you know, it's sad that people getting shot, sad that people get injured. Um, but I'm just sitting here thinking, why ain't y'all in the house? LA, I know ain't open back up, like to, to the point where they're saying it's safe to go outside. So I'm just like, well, I mean, why can't y'all go inside? Why can't y'all go inside? The fact that y'all are there and now people, the fact that y'all are there and now people are dead. It's just like, well, I mean, we just need to stay put. We just need to stay put, right? So that went down. The Denver Broncos, y'all know how when you go to Six Flags and the uh, you be hot and it be spraying like the water mist on the side. Well, the Denver Broncos had like a metal detector type thing with mist of sanitizer that sprays on them as they walk in. The sanitizer was called MicroSure and apparently it's, it's not, it's like a powerful non-toxic disinfectant that kills viruses, right? And each player is walking through this thing. So I'm like, if this thing work out, can they send these to the schools? Because did y'all see down in Georgia, I don't know if they started school or they opened school for like a materials pickup or I don't know. Y'all know I'm a teacher. And, um, you know, we trying to decide now if we gonna go back or, or um, and teach in school, are we gonna do virtual? Are we gonna do a combination of both, hybrid, whatever. I, myself, I said, you know, I'm ready to serve wherever y'all need me to serve. Um, I understand, you know, that we will have to go back to the classroom. I understand that, you know, a lot of parents aren't down with that. If y'all need people to be in the classroom, I will be there. But that don't mean I'm not nervous. That don't mean I'm not gonna be cautious. But, um, so th this Georgia picture here, where all these kids are in this hallway, you literally see one mask, maybe one mask of this girl. And I'm like, I mean, with this, I mean, what what did y'all expect when these kids, even in this picture, they're just walking. But even in that picture, it's like, um, nobody's walking in a line, ain't no social distancing going on. And then, I mean, you you don't even see in the picture them hugging or embracing each other. Think about it, most of these kids ain't seen each other since March. This picture is, is alarming because, you know, before it wasn't. I mean, as a teacher, the only thing that would irk me is y'all need to walk on the right side. Walk on the right side, make a clear, make a hole, make a hole. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what they're doing about the schools. Like I told y'all, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to do what I have to do, but this, this picture is, is, is what? In other Rona news, the rapper designer, y'all know he sings Panda. Um, he believes the Rona is gone. And I, I feel like a lot of y'all feel that same way as well. Y'all need to stop subscribing to that way of thinking. The Rona is not gone. It is still out and prevalent. Still need to wash your hands. You still need to wear your mask. You still need to use hand sanitizer. Wash your hands and hand sanitizer. You'll notice it's two different things because hand sanitizer does not wash your hands. You still need to use gloves if you have them. You need to do all of the things. Stop listening to these people, okay? In the UK, a child was eating, enjoying his chicken nugget, chicken nuggets in his Happy Meal from McDonald's and in the UK, I think I already said that, and a mask, a piece of a mask was deep fried into the chicken nugget. I mean, <laughs> it's like, were, were you not wearing the mask? Did it just fall in the deep fryer? I mean, you don't the chicken nuggets you gotta put into the batter and then they come frozen so i'm just like how did that even happen you had to have done that on purpose like uh, i used to work at mcdonald's that's how that's how i know they come frozen you don't they don't make them from scratch there enough where you would mix a mask in there it's like i don't i don't really understand i don't really understand that so y'all we, we got to do something the rona is i mean if you can't do nothing else but stay home and when you go out, wear your mask. I mean, just start there. Just start there. But it's like, there's so many people that feel like it's an infringement of their rights. Girl, a mess. Candy from Real Housewives of Atlanta, you guys know she's 
um, like super famous for throwing like the best parties. And this year she threw her husband Todd, you know, a bowling party. And then she had like the exotic dancers in these like different um, glass boxes and cases and everybody had on masks. So it was like real Rona friendly. And I'm like, yes, be an advocate and show us how to do it. Okay, and other news, Zanique, who is Tiny's um, oldest daughter, and uh, you know, Ti is her stepdaddy, but you know, pretty much we that we call them her parents. Um, Zanique announced that she is preggers. She's about five months along, and she is having a girl. So congratulations to her. Um, her and her boyfriend of like two years are having this child, and they announced it on like this live stream or this show on. It was like some some show they have. I seen Romeo on there. Um, and they had T.I. on there and maybe uh, Tiny already knew, but when Zanique said it, T.I. was just like, yeah, y'all need to go ahead and roll up and he needed a drink and he needed all these things. And I'm just like, Lord Jesus, y'all know T.I. is overprotective. So I pray his strength and Zanique's, okay? All right, but congratulations to her. Khalees, who taught us how to bring the milkshakes to cause the boys um, to come to the yard. She is pregnant as well, okay? She is living proof that, you know, you don't have to be young, super young to be having these kids. She is pregnant as well, and congratulations to her. We are hoping um, the best for Zanique and Khalees. Healthy babies, healthy pregnancy, and, um, you know, no problems at the hospitals, Jeez. All right, congratulations to Marseille Martin. Y'all know I love Marseille Martin. If you didn't know, now you know. She has been blessed with her own talk show on um, this new network called Quibi. If you guys are unfamiliar with Quibi, Quibi is basically like this new platform where it's like short type of content. I believe it's like all under 10 minutes and I'm just like, I can't do another subscription. I mean, a lot of my subscriptions are free somehow. I don't know how, I know Disney Plus is free because we got Verizon and Hulu's free because we got Spotify. I don't know, I, they all intertwine somehow. I think the only one we truly pay for is Netflix. But anyway, um, so Quibi, I'm like, Lord, should I get it? I thought about getting it when I seen like the punked revamp, but then I was like, no, I don't need to, I don't know. But anyway, congratulations to Marseille. I'm sure we'll be seeing clips of it. She's like the youngest person to get a talk show. So that's what's up. Congratulations to Kiki Palmer, who looks like she's gonna be having a role on The Proud Family. I don't know if it's reoccurring, but um, she's gonna be having a role. So congratulations to her as well. Congratulations to Rihanna, who is on the cover of Harper's Bazaar, talking about her new um, line, Fenty Skin. So not only does she have Fenty, the makeup line and the makeup products. Now she has skincare for us men and women, I believe. So y'all be looking out for that. Y'all pick up y'all products, okay? Pick them up. So she got the Savage with the lingerie. She she said no music. We, we're not doing music, so you can stop getting your hopes up. Um, but everything else, I got you, all right? Uh, speaking of music, Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion, this is why my video I'm recording so late at night because I was waiting for this release. We seen this art for the song and that they look alike. They look, I mean, the same here. And you know, we're all getting excited for a WAP. Now, when I found out what it stood for, I stood for, I said, Jesus, are they gonna be able to play this on the radio? Now, the video that premiered, it was censored. So I was like, okay, it's. It's censored enough that I can be on the radio. Um, it's sampling the song that we all remember from early high school, late middle school. It's some in this house, it's some in this house. If you see them, point them out. Okay, so that song, right? We got lots of choreo popping off. We got lots of looks, honey, popping off. We see Kylie Jenner. I'm like, okay, I get it because of who she is in the, in the industry and all of that, but. <laughs> No, thank you. So shout out to them. Um, they did that in that video. I was definitely here for it. Shout out to Meg. Um, she is the, she's now the global ambassador, a global ambassador for Revlon. So things are looking up for her, especially after all the bad news that we've had, that we had last week with her in the past couple weeks. So shout out to them. Make sure y'all check out the video and the song. They got the, the song on vinyl. They got it popping. Now I will say, 
that I ordered Savage on vinyl back in May and I still have not received it. So I don't even know how to follow up. I don't even know. It said eight to nine weeks and technically it hasn't been um, nine weeks yet. Okay, so once it, hit nine, once it hits nine weeks, I will be inquiring somehow. Um, Instagram. Instagram has a new TikTok-like feature called Reels. Okay, y'all heard that TikTok might be going away because apparently it's owned by um, China or it originated in China or somebody, somebody owns it in China. The administration is talking about taking it away and... Um, we ain't gonna have it no more, banning it. So Instagram was like, okay, let's roll this out. Let's roll out reels and it's 15 second videos and you can do the same clip type things, but they mostly have um, songs. So I haven't seen like actual bits of like voices yet, but I'm sure people will start to record that and it'll pick up. It's starting to pick up already. So um, congratulations to Instagram. They, they came right in up under Vine and added video and now they adding Reels. So it's like TikTok, <laughs> y'all, y'all might be done. Anyway, that's all the news for this week. If I left anything out, you guys leave it down below and also leave your comments on this week's weekly wrap up, all the things that we talked about and discussed. What are your thoughts and feelings? I'm Kim Ray, this is Kim Ray Music TV and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!